All right, so in this build video, we are going to show you a step-by-step -step process of how to build our lead screw driven work bee. This is a thousand millimeters by a thousand millimeters, which maps out to 40 inches by 40 inches. It's lead screw driven. It's a rigid design, highly desirable amongst builders. Harder material cuts. We have enough room here to cut down just about anything. We also have an increased depth configuration, so this machine can go to a desirable depth as well as the travel is about three and a half inches from the z-axis this machine is awesome guys super excited to start building it so let's go ahead and get started alright so to start this build we are going to need um, one of our extreme wheel shells two of our bearings and one of our precision shims to assemble this wheel uh, we're going to start off with the shell placing the bearing on top, securing it into place, taking our precision shim, placing it here in the middle, and locking it into place with the other bearing. That's what it should look like. Now we're going to go through and assemble the rest of the wheels just like we did this one, and we will move on to the next step. Alright guys, now we're moving on to the Y plate assembly. And this is going to include our um, Y plate as well as two of our 25 millimeter screws, two of our three millimeter aluminum spacers, two of our precision shims, two of our nut blocks, and two nylon hex nuts. So now we are going to assemble one on the left side here. As you can see, there are holes next to the center, the center hole where the motor shaft will reside over here to the left. These two holes is where we will be mounting the nut block. So we'll grab one of our 25 millimeter screws, slot it through the hole, bring our other, just like so. And I flip this over generally to give you a sturdy foundation to attach your three millimeter aluminum spacer as well as your precision shim. All right. Once you have both your 3mm aluminum spacer and precision shim attached, you will take your nut block. Make sure that the slotted holes for the hex nut are facing you on the outside of the plate. We will insert the nut block just like so. Grabbing our nylon hex nuts, we will attach to the screw. Generally I do this first so I can get the hex nuts threaded onto the screw. Definitely helps for the assembly. From there, I will flip the plate on the side, pull the screw back a little bit because this nut plate is designed to hold the nylon hex nuts inside of the plate. And you start to fasten like so. Give it a little torque. We're not going to fasten it completely tight. We want to leave a little room for when we thread our lead screw through the nut block. That way we can avoid any type of backlash. Alright, that's really looking good. Not too tight. If you do tighten it all the way back up a little bit on the screws and that is what the first nut block attached to the plate is going to look like. It's looking sweet. Definitely loving this work bee right now. Tell you what. Alright, so we're going to go to our next nut block which is going to be assembled the same way. Alright, now that you have both of your nut blocks assembled onto the Y assembly plate, it should look like so. It's looking really nice. We do have our screws loosened a little bit, so when we run the lead screw through the assembly, we won't have any backlash. And now we will be moving on to the next step. Alright, moving on to the next step here guys, we're going to be doing our wheel assembly for our Y axis right plate. So as you can see here, we're going to have our nut block assembly attached to our Y axis right plate and our uh, inner plate here. We're also going to need six of our six millimeter eccentric spacers, 14 precision shims, seven of our black nylon hex nuts, eight of our six millimeter aluminum spacers, seven of our nine millimeter aluminum spacers, 14 of our assembled wheels, seven of our 60 millimeter screws, an M5 ball driver here, spanner wrench, and our permanent marker. So we're gonna start off by marking our eccentrics. We want to find our six millimeter insignia that is pressed into our eccentric spacer. So go ahead and mark that. 
and we're going to do the same thing to our additional centric spacers. So go ahead and do that. Alright, perfect. Now that we have those marked, we're going to go ahead and take a look at our Y-axis right plate here. As you can see, our four top holes here are smaller than our three bottom. Our centric spacers are going to be in the larger holes here on the bottom. And the purpose of that is to add preload to the wheel. We're going to be able to rotate that eccentric in this larger hole space. So let's go ahead and feed our 60 millimeter screws into these holes. All right, perfect. So go ahead and rotate the plate around and let the plate rest on its front face. Having these screws erect here, we can go ahead and start our dual wheel configuration. So we're going to start with our centric side first, noticing that our marked end is going to face away from our front side. Let's go ahead and place those. All right, now following the eccentric, we're going to put on our precision shims. So go ahead and do that. And following that, we're going to go ahead and put our wheels on top. All right, then our 9mm aluminum spacer on top, followed by our second wheel. Once again, if you find any issues with the precision shim not aligning with your screw, you can rotate it like I just did there or you can adjust it with your M5 ball driver by simply pushing it through and adjusting it like so. Alright, so now that we have our second wheel in place, we're going to go ahead and put a precision shim on top. And following that, our last eccentric with our marked side facing us away from our fixed wheels. And make sure that our upper lip here is facing our inner plate, so it's going to be facing up. Alright, perfect. So now that completes our eccentric side. We're going to go ahead and move forward to our fixed wheel side, starting with our 6mm aluminum spacer. Go ahead and put that on all four. Following that, our precision shims. Go ahead and put on all four. And in addition to that, we're going to go ahead and put our wheel assemblies on top of our precision shim and then our 9 millimeter aluminum spacer followed by our wheels alright in addition to our dual wheel configuration here we're going to go ahead and put on top our precision shims and then following suit will be our 6 millimeter aluminum spacers go ahead and put those on top all right, perfect. That's looking great, guys. As you can see here, our aluminum side, our aluminum spacer side, which is our fixed side, is completely configured, as well as our centric side. That's looking great. I'm going to go ahead and grab our inner plate here, and notice that our four holes on top here are going to align with our four fixed wheels, as well as the eccentric on the bottom. Let's go ahead and stack it like so. Should kind of snap in place with your eccentrics, just like that. It's a great fit. It's looking good. So let's go ahead and put on our black nylon hex nuts. Just going to go ahead and thread them on. If you want, go ahead and do that real quick. And then we'll fasten those down with our ball driver. All right, perfect. So let's go ahead and tilt this to the side, guys. Go ahead and grab your spanner wrench. Let's go ahead and tighten down our, our fixed wheel side first. All right, now moving on to our centric side. Go ahead and tighten those down, guys. All right, perfect. Now we have a complete wheel assembly onto our Y-axis right plate here. That looks great, guys. So go ahead and put that to the side, and let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, guys, so on this step, we are going to be mounting our NEMA 23 to our Y-axis left plate. We are going to need four of our 60 millimeter M5 screws, four of our nine millimeter aluminum spacers, four of our 40 millimeter aluminum spacers, and one flexible coupling. So to start this off, we're gonna notice that the plate has four points of access for the motor to be mounted onto the plate. 
It's right next to the insignia of Open Builds, the Work B. So from there we are going to take one of our 60 millimeter screws, insert it into one of the slots of the NEMA 23, like so. We're going to take one of our 40 millimeter aluminum spacers and one of our 9 millimeter aluminum spacers and we're going to mount it to the plate. Now each one of these uh, holes are threaded so you don't have to worry about having a nylon hex nut on the back portion of the screw. We're simply just going to thread this in one at a time. Alright, that's the first one. You don't want to tighten it down completely because we do want to have access to get the other uh, three screws in place. So same process. I'm going to slide the 9mm spacer underneath the 40 here. Move these wires out of the way so you can see. Just like so. Slide it into position and fasten it down. Alright, now that we have all of the sections in place, we'll go ahead and fasten these screws down to lock the motor into place. Alright, and that's what it should look like here. Now, for the next portion of this step, we're going to take our flexible coupling. And notice that we have two different uh, hole sizings. One on the bottom is larger than the one on the other side. This smaller one is a quarter inch will be attached to the shaft of the motor. So we're going to place it around the motor shaft like so. And the motor shaft itself, let me take this back out so you can see, the motor shaft is going to have a flat spot. I'm going to spin it around for the camera. That flat spot needs to be locked into place with these grub screws here on the end. So as I'm positioning this flexible coupling, I'm going to use this portion aligned with the flat spot to secure the flexible coupling into place. And that's to make sure that it doesn't get loose while the machine is running after it's built. So I'm going to line it first. So we will begin to tighten down the scrub screw here to the flat portion of the motor shaft. Make sure it's nice and secure. And on the back end of the flexible coupling there is another right. screw and we will tighten that down as well. Alright, and this is what it will look like with the motor mounted. As you can see we have the open builds facing the same direction as the Work B insignia. This looks really nice, it's coming together great. And we will put this to the side for now and move on to the next step. Okay guys, for this next step we are going to assemble our nut blocks first and then move on to the wheel assembly. So just like the other portion of our step with the opposite plate, we are going to take our two 25 millimeter screws for one of our uh, nut blocks and our other two will be with our opposite nut block. We'll also need an additional four precision shims, four of our three millimeter aluminum spacers, and four of our nylon hex nuts. So we're gonna start off with our 25 millimeter screw, insert it into our right pocket holes next to the center hole where the motor shaft will go, as you can see here. And I'll do the same for the opposite side. All right. And we'll gently flip the plate over to give us ease of access in mounting these nut blocks, just like so. Add the 3mm aluminum spacer first onto the 25mm screw. Do it on both sides. Alright, and then we're going to put our nut block on. So notice that our hex design in the nut block is actually built to help fasten the nylon hex nut down into the screw. So this should be inserted into that pocket. So we're going to mount the block now, start a thread with our nylon hex nut, and we'll do this on both sides as well. All 
All right. We'll tilt the plate to the side and notice as I pull the block back, the nylon hex nut disappears. It is inside the pocket. That's what we want. So we're going to go ahead and fasten these down. Now, like the last plate, we're not going to fasten them down completely because we want to run our lead screw through this configuration before we tighten the nut blocks down completely. That way there is no backlash on our machine. So if you tighten it all the way and you just loosen it by one turn, that'll be sufficient. We're going to do the same thing on the opposite end. Just tilt the plate to the opposite side, pull it back a little bit, and fasten it down. All right. So now that we have our nut blocks mounted, this is what it should look like. Once again, this is a repeated process from, from our last plate. So you should have the hang of it by now. But just to give you an extra look, they should be a little bit loose. Like I said, so we don't have any backlash through our Y-axis lead screw driven portion of the actuator. It's really looking good, guys. So we're going to put this to the side and move on to our next step. Okay, guys, for this next step, we are going to start our wheel assembly for our Y-axis right plate. It's going to be same as the last plate. We are going to need seven of our 60 millimeter M5 screws. We're going to need seven nylon hex nuts black. We're going to need 14 of our precision shims, 14 of our wheel assemblies, the extreme wheel assemblies. We're going to need eight of our six millimeter aluminum spacers. We're also going to need seven of our nine millimeter aluminum spacers, six of our six millimeter eccentrics, and our M5 ball driver here. All right, so similar to the last process, we're going to insert our 60 millimeter M5 screws first for an ease of assembly. Definitely helps out a lot. There's definitely uh, other options as well if you find that it's too hard to flip the plate without the screws moving we have um, masking tape that we use painters tape and you can actually put that across our screws which will lock them into place while you're building your wheel assembly um, in this video in particular um, we will show a little bit of that to um, give you an idea of just how that works on this plate in particular it's not necessary, but if you would like to use that in the following steps, we will show you how. All right, so now that we got our 65 mm, or 60 millimeter screws in place, like so, we're going to slide the plate over, like so. Generally with screws this long too, they won't fall out. They'll kind of catch on the sides of the plate. So as you can see, my 60 millimeter screws are in place and ready to be built with the wheel assembly. So. We're going to start off with the bottom portion, which is our eccentric side, and then we'll move on to our top portion, which is our locked wheel side. Now once again with our eccentric spacers, we are going to want to mark the 6mm side with the permanent marker, as you can see I did here already, and we're going to face those down away from the top fixed wheels. And this will give us an easier idea of how much we need to adjust the eccentrics to add preload on the access. All right, so we're going to start off with our centric on all three of these screws. And we're going to add our precision shim on all three. And then our wheels. Now if you see one in particular that has the precision shim still slightly moved in the middle, you can actually spin it and it will lock into place onto the screw or you can adjust it with your M5 screwdriver. Alright, so now we're going to add our 9mm aluminum spacers on top of the wheel and then we will add our additional extreme wheel for our dual wheel configuration which definitely is looking good. Alright, so on top of these we will add our precision shim as well as our centric spacer. Make sure that your marked side is facing outward away from the fixed wheels as well as the insert facing upward to mount to our inner plate like so. Now 
and then we'll move on to our top portion here for our fixed wheels. So we're going to add our 6 millimeter aluminum spacer to all four screws and then our precision shims on top of the 6 millimeter aluminum spacers. Alright, and then we will add our extreme wheels. I like to face the open builds insignia to the top. Keeps it nice and uniform and it just looks fantastic on these wheels. I really love this design. It's awesome. Alright, so the additional two sides we're going to add these wheels to and then our 9mm aluminum spacers on top of these wheels here. With our additional wheels on top of the 9mm aluminum spacers. Then we will add our precision shims on top of the second wheel. Along with our 6mm aluminum spacer. And that is the assembly. Alright, so we will take our inner assembly, inner plate assembly for our wheels, align it with the four on top with our fixed wheels, the three on the bottom with our centric side. Place it like so. That fit on really nice. You shouldn't have any problems if you do. Just kind of shift the plate around and the centrics will lock into place with the hole spacing being a little bit larger on the bottom three holes. So now we are going to grab our nylon black hex nuts and thread them in slightly to make this process a little bit easier and fastening these down. Now with this right side of the y-axis we will not need a motor mounted to the side. The other motors will be behind the um, y-axis which we will get into in our following steps but just wanted to put it out there so you're not confused with mirroring our last plate assembly. This one will not require one of our NEMA 23's. Alright, once you have this threaded in, I'm going to turn this to the side. So we're going to fasten these screws down. Need our open build spanner wrench our M5 screwdriver or ball driver alright and if you do see your eccentrics move from the mark side as you can see mine moved slightly we will adjust them back towards the bottom facing you away from our top our top uh, fixed wheels that way when we are adding preload to the y-axis we will know where to start All right, after you have those fastened down, we're going to go ahead and adjust these eccentrics to face the bottom. As you can see here, it's just a slight adjustment. And it is definitely going to help when we're adding preload to the y-axis. You need to have that starting point, otherwise you will be adjusting for a while trying to find the right setting. All right, and this is our Y-axis right assembly. It's looking really great, guys. It's coming together nicely. All right, so if you want to put that to the side, we will move on to our next step. Okay, in this next step, we are going to be assembling our X-plate carriage system, which is going to include our, our uh, X-plate carriage assembly here our M5 screws, six of them, six of our precision shims, three of our six millimeter aluminum spacers, three of our six millimeter eccentric spacers, uh, six of our nylon hex nut black, and six of our extreme wheeled wheel assemblies. Also, we will need our permanent marker black, M5 ball driver, and our spanner wrench. So to start this off, we're going to go ahead and mark our eccentric spacers like so. I've already got these pre-marked. So go along the three of the eccentric spacers and mark the six millimeter engraving 
that way we can adjust this later on on our x-axis alright so we're gonna start off with the wheel assembly we're gonna take our 30 millimeter screws and run them across the plate like so should see three sides the three sides with the larger recessed holes are gonna be for our centric spacers so make sure you align those properly the other three will be for our fixed wheel portion so as you can see here the recessed holes on the left side are larger that's for the adjustment made with the eccentric spacers so we can add preload to our x-axis all right so the like the same as the other plates we're gonna flip it over as you can see here we are going to go ahead and start the assembly process so on the fixed wheel side we will put our six millimeter aluminum spacer on all three screws with our precision shims on top and then our wheels with the open build insignia facing up it's your preference I like the look of the insignia it looks great and it's also uniform if you have any issues with the precision shim you can twist it around the screw or adjust it with your M5 ball driver as I just did make sure it locks into place and follow the process for the next two screws just like that now for the eccentric side going to make sure that our eccentrics are facing away from the fixed wheels with our marked side facing out and we will add our precision shims on top like so and add the wheels after so after you have the wheels on top we will add our nylon hex nuts go ahead and start to thread them on each side alright and after you have them threaded on top you're going to tilt the plate to the side and fasten them down generally I'll get a little torque on there with my finger to make sure that the wheel assembly doesn't fall loose then take your spanner wrench and attach it to the other side while you're fastening these wheels down just like so and repeat the process for the next five wheels alright now that we have the wheels fastened it's looking great we are going to adjust our centrics to where they're facing outward away from our fixed wheels as you can see that is the marked side just like so alright now that's the finished product of this step it's looking great we're going to set this off to the side here and move on to our next step okay on this step we are going to be assembling our anti backlash nut block to our X carriage assembly you will need your X carriage assembly that we just assembled from the last step also you will need two of your precision shims two of your three millimeter aluminum spacers two of your nylon hex nuts two of your 25 millimeter M5 screws and your anti backlash nut block alright so to start this off we're going to find our center holes here on the X carriage assembly these holes should be recessed and this will be for our anti backlash nut block insert your M5 25 millimeter screws here I'm going to flip it over using a method that I prefer to secure our aluminum spacers and precision shims on the back side of the plate like that you can see that the screws are erect vertical it's easy access we are going to then add our aluminum spacers well as our precision shims and this gives you even spacing for your uh, anti backlash nut block that way the lead screw can flow through the threaded holes 
All right, we're gonna mount that anti-backlash nut block like so. And similar to our nut blocks, it's going to have the hex design within the anti-backlash nut block, as you can see. So no need for a spanner wrench. This will work just fine once we start to screw it into place. Go ahead and thread your nylon hex nuts on top here. All right, once you've done that, go ahead and tilt this to the side, pull back your anti-backlash nut block a little bit, and start to fasten it down. All right, now that the anti-backlash nut block is assembled and in place, it looks great. This additional adjustment here with uh, our thin hex nut here is for adjustments made after the lead screw is put through the anti-backlash nut block to adjust for any type of backlash that we might have. So that adjustment will be made later on. I just generally tighten it down with fingers, just a little strength on there to keep it from moving. Make sure your, your anti-backlash nut block is in place properly. It looks really great. I'm going to go ahead and put this assembly to the side and we will start on our next step. Okay, so on this next step we will be assembling our nut blocks to our x-axis main plate here. As you can see, this plate here is designed for uh, a multi-purpose configuration. Three plates will be stacked on top of this to not only run for a z-axis but also our um, x-axis. So we're going to need our x-axis plate here. We're going to need four of our 25 millimeter M5 screws, four of our precision shims, four of our nylon hex nuts, four of our three millimeter spacers, and uh, two of our nut blocks. So similar to uh, our other assemblies on the other plates for these nut blocks, same process. We're going to find our, um, our holes here towards the middle of the plate. As you can see there's a blank uh, space here where there's no holes. To the right of that you'll find these two holes here. This will be for our nut blocks. Insert your 25 millimeter screws and flip the plate like so. Alright, now that we have the screws in place I'm going to go ahead and add our 3 millimeter spacers onto each screw. And then we are going to add our precision shims. And this will give us even spacing, four millimeters to be exact, so our lead screw can flow through the middle of this access properly. Go ahead and add our nut blocks to the top of these. Make sure that the hex design is facing upward. This will be for our nylon hex nut. As you can see here, there's no need for a spanner wrench. This configuration and design works perfectly for tightening down our uh, screws. So we'll go ahead and fix those like so. Start to thread our nylon hex nuts on top. Once again, I like to thread them beforehand. It's up to you if you find that there's another option that's easier. This works good for me. Just keeps it secure enough to where I can tighten it down properly with my M5 ball driver. All right, we're going to go ahead and tilt the plate to the side and start to tighten down our screws. Pull back a little bit on your nut block. Make sure that the hex nut is inserted into the block and start to tighten it down. All right, once you have them tightened down, it should look like so. Now remember, we're going to keep these a little loose so back off a turn on each four that way we can adjust our lead screw properly and that is our X access plate with our nut blocks attached a little loose and we will tighten those down later alright now you can put this to the side and we will start on our next step okay on this next step we are going to be assembling our wheels onto uh, the X plate front portion we will need our X plate, the back portion, which we assembled our nut blocks to on the last step. Our front plate for the X portion of the access. We'll need six of our six millimeter eccentric spacers. We will also need seven of our 60 millimeter screws. We will need eight of our six millimeter aluminum spacers. Seven of our nine millimeter aluminum spacers. We will also need 14 of our precision shims. And additionally, our assembled wheels, 14 as well. 
We also have over here for our tools our M5 ball driver, spanner wrench, and our permanent marker. All right, so let's go ahead and start assembling this. First off, we're going to grab our 6mm centric spacers and go ahead and mark them. I have my others marked, so go ahead and mark those on this side where you see the 6mm insignia, like so. And that way we have a point of reference where we can make an adjustment. All right, so now we're going to take our 60mm screws and feed them into our front plate. As you can see, we have four on top, three on the bottom. The three on the bottom are going to be for our centric spacers. They are wider holes as well, but as you can see, they are pretty distinct differences. All right, so go ahead and feed the 60 millimeter screws in. All right, we're gonna flip the plate over gently. All screws are pointing up, secure. This makes for an easier assembly and we're going to go ahead and start on our bottom portion here which is our eccentric side make sure to face the marked end towards you away from your fixed wheels which will be up top here for our aluminum spacers all right after that we will add our precision shims on all three of the screws and then our wheels. Once again if you have any issues as you can see I have my precision shims in the wheels were moved slightly to the right or the left complicating the mounting process all you have to do is spin the wheel on the screw and it locks into place super simple. Alright then we're gonna add our 9mm aluminum spacer on top of these wheels second wheel for all three screws here. Alright, precision shim for all three. And then lastly, our eccentric spacers with our marked in facing us. Away from the fixed wheels on top. Alright, and that's the eccentric side. Now for the top portion for our fixed wheels, go ahead and grab our 6mm aluminum spacers and slide those on all four screws and then our precision shims on top and our wheel assemblies our nine millimeter aluminum spacers and our second wheel all right now our precision shims after the second wheel So like so. And then lastly, our 6mm aluminum spacers on top. And that is the assembly. Now from there, we will mount our x-axis back plate. Let's go ahead and bring the plate over. As you can see, it's going to mount from this end. So our hex nuts will mount on the back end here. So, line these up with the three holes on the bottom for the eccentrics and the four on top. You should lock into place, make minor adjustments, and it will lock into place with the eccentrics on the bottom mostly because the hole spacing is wider for that purpose. After the plate is mounted, we're going to take our nylon hex nuts Alright, so once you've finished Threading in your nylon hex nuts to the back plate here. We're going to flip it on its side very gently using our spanner wrench and our M5 ball driver here. We are going to make our adjustments. Tightening down these screws. Starting with the fixed side first, preferably. In doing so, it just allows the plate to align up. So when we do make adjustments to our centrics, we don't have to refasten the upper portion of our fixed side of the plate. All right, make sure that they're tight. Cause this last portion of our uh, next step on this assembly will stack on top of these recessed holes here on top. So you won't be able to access them again. So I want to make sure that they're nice and tight and we'll make the adjustments on our centric side for any additional preload that's necessary for that access. 
All right, so those are tight. Now we're going to work on the eccentric side. Make sure that the marked side is facing us away from the fixed wheels on top. If they aren't, we will make that adjustment after tightening these down. All right, so same with the eccentric side. I'm going to make sure it's nice and tight. So it's essential that there's proper preload on this axis for an accurate, rigid machine. All right, so looks here that all my mark sides are pretty much facing outward. I'm going to adjust a couple to make sure. All right, so just like so. And this is our finished product for this step. It's looking great. These recessed holes look super nice on this back end. Just looks pro. Really excited about this machine. All right, so if you want to put it to the, to the side, we're going to go ahead and start on our next step. Okay, for this next step, we are going to be mounting our Z-axis plate to our X-axis assembly here. In this step, we will need our um, assembly here for our x-axis which we did on our last step our z-axis plate which was also three steps ago these are already assembled and we will need also our eight 20 millimeter screws also need eight of our nylon hex nuts our M5 ball driver our open build spanner wrench and I'm going to show you a style of uh, mounting this plate with uh, our masking tape, painter's tape. All right, so let's go ahead and get started here. We're going to start off by aligning our plate to our X axis assembly. As you can see, the Z plate here will allow for the axis to run up and down, as well as the axis behind it will run from side to side. All right, so now that you got those holes lined up, we're going to feed our screws into the side. I'm going to go ahead and tilt this to the side as well. Now in here, you will see that there are mounting holes for this plate. There are eight of them. So along the sides of the plate, in the middle, in the top, and the bottom, we will be mounting our screws. So go ahead and feed them through. If you need to use your ball driver, there are holes to access these on the back end of the plate. So in order to get these straight, sometimes you do have to use that ball driver. So as you can see here, I'm going to feed the screw through. Just like so. Alright, so for this top portion, we're going to go ahead and use our masking tape to lock these into place. So it's not going to move on us. It's going to show you on a couple of the screws, just to give you an idea of your options. So we'll just do it on these top portion screws here. And the cool thing about this painter's tape is it doesn't leave a residue on the plates. They're in great shape, so we don't want to leave any residue on there. So the top portion screws I've got secured with the masking tape. Now here on the other side, I'm going to thread the hex nuts in. And I can put force on there because it's secured with the masking tape. All right, so from there, those are secure. Those aren't going anywhere. I can lock them into place with my ball driver after this portion. So I'm going to go ahead and strip the tape now. I'm going to go ahead and finish threading these other two screws. So I don't have to worry about them falling, falling out of the assembly. You can use your ball driver to make sure that the screws don't move. Alright, now we're going to flip this assembly. We need to access the bottom portion of the plate. Thread these holes. Thread these screws through the holes here. Alright. So now that we've got them threaded in, we're going to go ahead and tighten these screws down. All 
All right, once those are in place and tight and secure, this assembly and the step is finished. As you can see, you can start to see it coming together here. The X axis, like I said, from side to side, and your Z up and down. It's really looking sharp. All right, so if you want to go ahead and put this to the side, and we'll move on to our next step. Okay, so on this step, we are going to be setting up our Z axis actuator. We are going to need our X and Z assembly, a piece of our 250 C beam, as well as two of our Z axis end mounts. In addition, we will have eight of our 15 millimeter screws and our M5 ball driver. Now to start off, we need to make sure that the C beam is attached to our Z axis. So on the back end of this plate is where we will start, making sure that the inside of the C beam will be covering our anti backlash nut block here. Run it through. There shouldn't be any preload on this rail yet because we have not adjusted our centrics. But as you can see, it just slides on nicely. From there, we'll rest the plate and attach our end mounts. As you can see, there's four recessed holes here. Align that with the C beam, like so. You'll see that the opposite end where this hole is, that's where our lead screw will run through. And we'll get to that step later on, but there will be a flange bearing that will cover the inside of this as well as a lock collar. Alright, so I'm going to start by threading through our first screw. I just do it by hand at first to get the thread pattern started and then lock it into place with my ball driver. Alright, now that I have the thread started into the C-beam, I'm going to go ahead and lock these down. I like to make sure that the C-beam is actually in place with our end mount. So I align the edges. As you can see here, it's flush against the C-beam's end. And then continue to fasten down the rust. All right, and this is one of the end mounts mounted to the C-beam. Now we're going to work on the opposite end. Same process. All right, so that's our second end mount placed on the C-beam. It's looking really sharp. You see the open build insignia on top. On both ends it's really starting to come together all right now on the eccentric side of our plate assembly we're gonna go ahead and adjust that way we have some preload on this uh, Z axis as you can see the wheels are not touching the rail right now but they will be so here are the marked ends you'll see why we do this process marking the ends and facing them outward that way I can adjust these eccentrics properly and add this preload so we're going to take our spanner wrench here, and we are going to adjust the wheels. I'm going to turn them to the right, and every single centric should be adjusted the same way. And this prevents for any, any type of flaw or any type of adjustment that would cause complications for the other set of wheels. So now we can see that the wheels are on the rail. You want to be able to turn them slightly. See this one here in the middle is a little too tight. I'm going to adjust it the other way. So it should have some give to it. Tighten this one down. Generally I'll work with the left one first, then the right, then the middle. That way each end is tightened first before you work on the middle. It just keeps the process smooth and you have to continue to adjust. That's nice. So now we have the preload set on our Z-axis. Alright, so if you want to put that to the side, we're going to go ahead and move on to our next step. Okay guys, on this step, we are going to be mounting our NEMA 23 to our Z-axis. We're going to need our Z-axis assembly here that we just adjusted and assembled on our last, uh, our last step. We're also going to need four of our 60mm M5 screws we're going to need four of our 9mm aluminum spacers, four of our 40mm aluminum spacers, our flexible coupling, our NEMA 23 motor, and our ball driver set. 
which you can purchase on the Open Build Store. It's very useful, awesome tools. All right, so let's get started here. We're going to grab our Z axis, go ahead and stand it up. It should hold into place. There is a little give, so make sure that it doesn't fall down. Now, the top of the Z axis is this portion here. As you can see, it should be facing the same direction as this uh, back plate here. So we're going to start off placing this down, get a better angle so you guys can see this mounting process. The back wire should be facing this portion of the plate here, be the back end. So this is how the motor should mount, like so. That way the Z-axis front, we don't have wires hanging over. It's going to be nice and neat when this build is done. So we're going to grab one of our 60 millimeter screws here, thread it through one of our 40 millimeter aluminum spacers as well as a 9 millimeter aluminum spacer. Align it with the threaded holes on our Z-axis C-beam end mount and start to fasten it down. All right, and we're going to repeat the process for the next three. So sometimes when mounting the motor on top of the C-beam end mount, if you have the others too tight, like uh, for example, this is a situation where my screws were a little bit too tight, so I cannot get the last aluminum spacer in place. All you have to do is simply loosen the other three screws, and that should be the adjustment needed. If necessary, it will give you room to put that 9mm spacer in place. As you can see here, now it's in place, and go ahead and fasten down all four ends. Alright, so now I'm going to go ahead and finish tightening down all those uh, screws and we're going to grab our flexible coupling and make sure that we adjust our shaft on our motor to the flat side and tighten down these bolts here to the flat side of the motor to give us a secure mount. Alright, and make sure that you pay attention to the whole spacing here. This is quarter inch bore for the motor shaft. The back end is for our lead screw. Go ahead and tighten that down. Alright, that's sturdy. And we'll adjust the opposite end of the flexible coupling. Make sure that it's tight. Alright, that looks great. And this is our Z axis, guys. Super sturdy. We have our Centrix adjusted. We will run our lead screw through on our following step. Let's go ahead and put this to the side, guys, and we'll move on to our next step. All right, guys, for this next step, we are going to be assembling our lead screw into our Z-axis. So we have our Z-axis assembly as well as our 250 lead screw, which is actually 290 millimeters. We're also going to need two of our flange bearings two of our 8mm lock collars, two of our 8mm shims. Also our ball driver set. Alright, to start this off we're going to go ahead and feed the lead screw through the bottom portion. Now I'm going to move our assembly up a little bit. That way to give us access to the top of the lead screw. I'm going to put one of our flange bearings into the top of the lead screw. Notice that I have the cap side that will be inserted into the end mount faced back towards the bottom plate that is in purpose to mount this portion to the back end of the lead screw. So first the flange bearing, then our 8mm shim, and lastly our lock collar. So once you have the lock collar in place, go ahead and slide it back and we are going to feed our lead screw through the anti-backlash nut block might have to hold the assembly in place and start screwing the screw to the right. It should be a little bit tight. That way you know that the lead screw is going to stay in place as it moves this axis back and forth. Make sure that your flange bearing and your lock collar 8mm shim are all the way back on this bottom end as you're threading it through. 
Now once you see it on the other end, I'll show you. We are going to add the additional flange bearing, uh, 8 millimeter shim and our lock collar. So starting with the lock collar, place here, 8 millimeter shim in the middle between the flange bearing and the lock collar. We'll go ahead and make the adjustment all the way back. Now as you can see the flange bearing and the lock collar are missing from the back end we can simply make the adjustment backwards and slide those back to the end mount. Alright so we'll go ahead and keep that in place while we finish uh, screwing these pieces in. So the lead screw should meet the flexible coupling, which is right here on the top portion of the motor. As you can see, it is fed into the flexible coupling. You want to make sure that it's all the way through as far as it can go because we don't want the lead screw hanging out past our end mount here. So we've got a little bit more of an adjustment to make. You can grab the lead screw right here within the C-beam and go ahead and make those turns you want it just about flush on the back end of the CB man mount. Alright, that's perfect. So now our flange bearings are in place. They are inserted into the CB man mount hole here. So we're going to go ahead and lock our 8mm shim in place with our lock collar. Grab our ball driver and go ahead and tighten that to the right here. The same on the top end. Now we are going to make the adjustment to our flexible coupling. Go ahead and tighten that down to the lead screw as well as the other side. Tighten that down. Make sure that your lead screw is not going to come loose. That's great. We have the lead screw fully assembled in the Z axis. Alright, so now if you want to put this to the side, we're going to go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, on this next step, guys, we are going to be assembling our X gantry system onto our X axis on the 1000 millimeter C beam. We also have our 1000 millimeter 20 by 40 uh, V slot. We have our additional six 15 millimeter screws, and we are going to use our Y axis plate assembly on the right hand side of the C beam. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to need four of our 15 millimeter screws here on the side. Go ahead and move the 20 by 40 out of the way. Now here on the front end of the plate, we're going to see four different holes, which is mountable to our C-beam. It's going to make a C design. We're going to start off with the top. And go ahead and thread it into one of the C-beam holes. And generally when doing this, I try to hang the C-beam off the edge of the table. It makes it a little bit easier since the length of the plate. Alright, so now that we have the screws threaded in, we're going to go ahead and tighten them down. And you don't want to strip the screws, so don't over tighten it. If there's any problems with the squareness of the machine, we can always go back, loosen these up, and make the proper adjustment. So now we're going to move on to our 20 by 40 rail, which is going to mount on the back end of the machine here. There's two separate holes for this mounting configuration, right underneath this, uh, this gap here. So we're going to do the same thing we did for the C-beam, and thread these 15 millimeter screws in place. Now with this, you can actually move the plate up forward onto the table now that we have somewhat of a placement with our x-axis we can access, access these holes easier
Now once again you want to tighten these screws down. Don't want to over tighten them. Alright, that is nice and tight. You're starting to see the X axis here. And the step is finished and we will go ahead and move on to the next step guys. Okay, on this next step guys, we are going to be assembling our Y plate assembly to our X axis along with mounting our X carriage which holds the Z axis and actuator. So, we're going to need our Z axis carriage as well as four of our M5 T nuts, two of our flange bearings, two of our 8mm lock collars, two of our 8mm shims, six of our M5 15mm screws, and of course our Y right assembly. And this will have the motor attached to the assembly. So first off, we're going to start with our M5 T nuts. We're going to place them into the C-beam before we do the mounting process because we are going to have a couple of our black angle corner connectors mounting on the back end of the C-beam to our plate for extra rigidity. So we're going to place two of our M5 T nuts here in the top portion of the C-beam track. And we're going to do the same for the bottom right here. Just go ahead and slide those down a little bit. All right, next we're going to take our X carriage with our Z axis and go ahead and slide this into place. The back plate facing the 20 by 40 rail. It should slide on relatively easy. Let's go ahead and slide that onto the end of the table here. Now we're going to go ahead and take our our Y access plate for our left side and we're going to do the same mounting process for this portion as we did the last. Let's kind of seat it to where you can see the holes and then we'll start to thread in our 15 millimeter screws. Now after I seat this first screw here, make sure it is secure before I start the others. I'm not going to tighten it down completely because I want to make sure that this is square. So I'm going to go ahead and start on this, the next three here. Alright, now that we have them in place, we're going to go ahead and make sure that they're tight. Just give it an extra turn. Don't over tighten it because we might need to make some adjustments. Alright, perfect. So now that that's in place, we're going to go ahead and stand this up. This is a thousand millimeter, so it is quite long. So in order to give proper view of this, I'm going to stand it on its side here. And that is our X axis, and it is looking great. Go ahead and show you the Z that's going to move across the X axis. As you can see, it slides and glides on this, this rail perfectly. It looks to be square. It's perfect. So after you have your X axis assembled here with the Z running across, we are going to add our lead screw. So we're going to be on the right side of the x-axis, the plate without the motor, and we are going to go ahead and run our 1000 millimeter lead screw through here. And add our additional flange bearing here that we're going to put on first, our 8 millimeter shim, and our 8 millimeter lock collar. And then we're going to run our lead screw up into the nut blocks. So as you adjust the lead screw throughout these nut blocks, you're going to make sure to push back your lock collar, your 8mm shim, and your flange bearing, because these are going to lock into place with the end plate. Just continue to move the lead screw throughout this axis. And once you see it come out on the other end, 
we're going to add our additional parts to this end of the lead screw. As you can see, my lead screw is through. So we're going to go ahead and add our pieces. Starting with our 8mm lock collar, go ahead and place it over here. Also, our 8mm shim and then our flanged bearing here. 8mm shim, then the flanged. Alright, then we're just going to continue to run the lead screw through until it reaches our coupling on the left side. Alright, so we've reached the other end to the flexible coupling. Now we are going to secure both sides of this axis with our flange bearing and our lock collar. So once you have that in place, we're going to go ahead and tighten down that lock collar. Alright, now that that's in place, we're going to flip to the other side. So once you have the lead screw fixed on the other side, we're going to add a little force here to our flange bearing to fit it into the other side of the end plate. As you can see here, it's fixed in. We're going to adjust our 8mm lock collar and fasten that down. Alright, now that that's tight, we're going to adjust our flexible coupling here and lock it into the lead screw. Alright, we're going to flip it around the other access point of the flexible coupling and we're going to tighten this down as well. Alright, now that that's tight, you have a fully assembled X-axis. It's looking great, guys. So we're going to go ahead and move this to the side and move on to our next step. Okay, guys, on this next step, we are going to be mounting our black angle corner connectors to our Y end plates. Now on our C-beam, we're going to have two of our M5 T-nuts that we placed in. Uh, on our previous steps before we mounted our end plates. So you should have two on each side, one for the top portion and one for the bottom portion of the C-beam. Now for this step we are going to need four of our 12 millimeter M5 screws, four of our 8 millimeter M5 screws, four of our hex nuts, uh, we need four of our black angle corner connectors as well, of course, and our M5 ball driver. So we're going to start it off with our M5 12mm and our black angle corner connector. We are going to mount to the side plate first. That way we can position our M5 T-nut later on with our ball driver. All right, it should snap into place. We'll take one of our black nylon hex nuts and secure that into place. Alright, and we're going to do the same thing for the left side. And also for the bottom portion, same process, 12 millimeter screw and black angle corner connector. Alright, now that we have those in place, we are going to fasten our 8mm screws to our M5 T-nuts on all four corner connectors. Now what I do is I generally take my, uh, my ball driver here and I'll push the T-nut forward slightly until it's aligned with the hole here in the black angle quarter connector. And you should be able to thread in your M5 8mm screw just like so. Tighten it down. You want to make sure that this is secure against the plate as well as the C-beam. So now we're going to tighten down the screws to the plate. We'll do the same on the right side. All right. And we are ready to move on to the next step. 
Okay guys, for this step we are going to be starting on our base assembly as well as running our C-beam through both of the Y axes. So for this step we are going to need two of our end plates. We need 15 of our 15 millimeter screws. We're also going to need eight of our 12 millimeter screws and eight of our M5 T-nuts. In addition, we will need our 2,000 millimeter C-beam and one of our 20 by 40 rails. Should be specified to 995 for the 1,000 by 1,000 work bee. And of course, our M5 ball driver here. So we're going to start off with our left axis. Make sure that the C entry is aligned with the center of our nut blocks like so. It should run through smoothly because we have not adjusted our centrics for preload yet. We will do that on our next step as well as our x-axis. So now that we have this one into place we're gonna push it back a little bit further for our mounting configuration on uh, our base assembly. I'm gonna take our additional C-beam and run it through the same way. Alright, now that we have that in place, we're going to take our 20 by 40 rail and put it underneath the C-beam. So just raise one up from one side, like so, and also on the right side. Now we're going to take our M5 T-nuts and run them into the sides, the 20 by 40. Two on top, two on bottom for both ends. Just place them in there. We can move them around with our M5 ball driver later on. Grab our other four. Add them to the top two inserts of the 20 by 40 rail and the bottom. Alright, now our M5 T-nuts are in place. Now we can take one of our end mounts as well as one of our 15 millimeter screws. And we are going to thread this through on the C-beam first to ensure that we get this machine square and all accesses are functioning correctly we need to make sure to start with our C-beam first we will pull our actuator forward make sure that our plates are square against the back end of this plate and then we will tighten it down so I've got the one started I'm going to thread in the rest and then we will fasten it to our 20 by 40 rail Alright, so now that's mounted to the C-beam. We're going to do the same thing on the opposite end here. Go ahead and grab one of your end plates. Make sure it lines up with your C-beam. And start the process over again like the last one we did. Alright, now we have our, our end plates in, in place. We have them mounted to the C-beam. Now we are going to work on the base assembly, which is the 20 by 40. We have our T-nuts in place. If not, you can adjust those with your ball driver pretty easily on both ends. We are going to bring our X-axis forward in order to align this machine properly. Alright, so now we're going to take our 12 millimeter screws and mount the 20 by 40 rail to our end plate. Now if you need to readjust the T-nuts, you can kind of reach in there with your ball driver. If it's magnetized, it makes it a little bit easier. You can move it around. All right, I'm not going to completely tighten these down. I want to make sure that my frame is square before I tighten everything down. I've got a pretty good idea that it is going to be square, but I'm going to double check it with my X axis. Alright, another 12 millimeter screw on our last T-nut on this side. Alright, that's in place. And we're going to move on to our left side. Again, we're going to grab another one of our 12 millimeter screws. Alright, once again, we're not going to tighten it down completely. We want to make sure that we're able to get this frame square as possible. So once you get that T-nut in place, go ahead and fasten that screw down. Grab another 12 millimeter screw. Alright, so those are fastened in there. We have our 20 by 40 rail here at the bottom for our base assembly. It's also mounted to our C-beam. So we're going to go ahead and move this actuator forward. 
Okay, so it's not completely square. And what I mean by that is as you can see here, there is a slight gap between the plate and the rail. On the opposite side, the plate is touching the rail here. So we're going to have to readjust the right side. That's why we didn't tighten the screws down completely. I'm going to go ahead and pop these loose. Keep the actuator forward. Tighten it down. All right, so now we can see that the plate is touching our 20 by 40 base assembly and also the left side is as well. It's really starting to come together, guys. Super excited. I'm going to move on to the next step. Okay, guys, on this step, we are going to be assembling our 20 by 40 rail for our base assembly on the back end of the machine. For this step, we will require two of our end plates for the opposite ends of the work bee. Also, we are going to need eight of our M5 T-nuts, eight 15 millimeter screws. Screws. Also going to need eight of our 12 millimeter screws and our M5 ball driver. So to start this off, we're going to grab our 20 by 40 rail and we're going to place it underneath the C-beam on both sides. Generally I'll work with one side first to get it aligned as you can see here and then I'll work on the opposite end. Alright, want to make sure that it's flush on the end of the C-beam, like so, and then the same on the right side. Alright, so we're going to grab our M5 T-nuts here. We're going to need four on each side, two on the top slot, two on the bottom slot. And make sure that this inside lip here is facing in. So you should see the T-nut like this on the uh, outside of the rail. So as I insert it, this is what you will see for the T-nut. I'm going to do the same thing for the bottom. So to set these T-nuts up, I'm going to use my ball driver here. Now just from uh, the experience of our last base assembly on the opposite side, I kind of have an idea of where the spacing is going to be. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust my T-nuts accordingly. Just makes for an easier mount with our end plate, just like so. That should be good. If I need to adjust it, I can adjust it once the plate's on the actual C-beam. So we're going to go to our right side, four T-nuts in total, two on top, two on bottom. And we're going to adjust the spacing. It looks great. Okay, so now we're going to grab one of our end plates here. And we are going to mount it to our C-beam. Once again, we want a flush mount. So I'm going to thread in a couple of these screws. And before I tighten it down, I'm going to make sure it's in the proper position. So we should see a flush mount on the C-beam the way that the plate is designed. Let's go ahead and grab one of our 15 millimeter screws here. We'll go ahead and thread it into one of the holes of the C-beam. And I'm going to follow suit with uh, the other three. Alright, so they're all loosely threaded into the holes. I'm going to go ahead and tighten them down. Alright, so now we're going to move on to our left side, our opposite end plate here. Grab one of our 15 millimeter screws. Go ahead and start to thread this in. All right, so we have those threaded in. I'm going to grab our M5 ball driver and begin to tighten these down. And now for the bottom portion for our base assembly, I'm going to slide my 20 by 40 rail to the end of the C-beam. We also want that to fit flush against the C-beam as well as our end plate. So adjust it accordingly. We're going to check the other side as well. Okay, so this one can actually be moved slightly. Make sure for a flush mount. Alright, that looks good. Alright, so now we are going to grab our 12 millimeter screws here and we are going to mount our 20 by 40 rail to our C-beam with the end plate. All right, we're not going to tighten it down completely. Once again, we're going to bring the x-axis forward here and make sure that the machine is square. All right, we're going to go ahead and do the bottom 12 millimeter screw to our T-nut. I'm going to go to the other side. All right, we're going to move on to the next side here. All right, now that we have this set in place, we're going to bring our x-axis forward so we can make sure that the machine is square. We're going to go ahead and do that now. All right, so we have an adjustment to make on the right side of the machine. As you can see here, there is a slight gap when the other side 
is flush. So after you make the adjustment, loosening these screws and retightening the screws on each side, we are going to try to pull the frame forward, making sure that it's touching the 20 by 40 rail here and it looks flush. We're going to go ahead and tighten that down. And as you can see, that is perfect. The other side is also flush against the 20 by 40, so no adjustment has to be made there. So we're going to go ahead and tighten down these screws completely and give them a nice crank. You want to make sure that this stays seated in place. If you have any other complications with squaring the frame, it could also be in the x-axis. You might need to readjust some of the screws on the side y-axis plates in order to seat the rail properly. That adjustment is simple to make. You simply just loosen these screws here for our C-beam on each side. Bring the x-axis forward against the base assembly and then you would tighten your screws down and that should fix any problems problems that you have. It's a pretty simple process. So now that we have our rail in place, it's starting to look really great. I'm excited. Check out the size of that machine. It's huge. All right, so we're going to leave this here and move on to the next step. Okay, guys, on this step, we are going to need our M5 ball driver, and we are simply going to be making some adjustments as well with our spanner wrench to our centrics on both of our y-axis here, both plates on the y-axis, and of course our nut blocks for our lead screw. Remember we left those loose so we could properly seat our lead screw on the x-axis. So we're going to go ahead and tighten that down first. Just make sure that's nice and tight. You don't want any play in the lead screw because these machines are built for accuracy. We do not want any play. It will cause our designs to be flawed. Alright, that's nice and tight. See that's rigid, there's no play in that lead screw whatsoever. So starting here on uh, the eccentric side on our left Y axis plate here, we're going to bring the whole system, the whole X axis, forward. Alright, so each eccentric is on the bottom portion of the plate, so we're going to go ahead and adjust those. Each one should be adjusted in the same direction. So we're going to start off with our first one here. Go ahead and adjust that to the right. We're going to check the tension on the wheel. The left side is good. Here we have the right wheel which has play. We're going to go ahead and adjust the right side a little bit more. All right, that really cranked it on there. I still have some mobility in the wheel is what we want. We don't want it too tight on the frame because that will cause problems for the extreme wheels. We don't want wear on the wheels before the machine is operational and adding that much pressure with our eccentrics would cause that problem. So the right wheel is good. Uh, the left wheel here on the top fixed wheels is against the rail, but I feel here on the bottom that the eccentric needs to be tightened down. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that adjustment. All right, perfect. So now we're going to do the same thing for our other three wheels on the bottom portion here. All right, perfect. So all the wheels are in place. They're sturdy against the rail. So let's move on to the right side. All right, so once you have these eccentrics adjusted, go ahead and feel the strength on the wheels. Like I said, they shouldn't be too tight. You should see a little bit of mobility as you turn it. As you can see, this one here, slightly stiff, but also slightly mobile. That's what we want. So now that we have those eccentrics adjusted, I'm gonna go ahead and pick our machine back up, place it on our table. All right, so now we're gonna move on to the next step, guys. Okay, guys, on this next step, we are going to be mounting our NEMA 23s on each side of our Y-axis. As you can see here, this is a nice shot of how large this machine is. It is a beauty. Tell you what, I'm super excited about seeing it come together. I know you guys are as well. All right, so for this step, we're gonna need two of our NEMA 23s. We're going to need eight of our 60 millimeter screws, two of our flexible couplings, eight of our 40 millimeter aluminum spacers, eight of our nine millimeter aluminum spacers, and of course our trusty uh, ball driver set here. All right, so we're going to start off with one of our NEMA 23s. We're going to leave the insignia facing upright. We're going to take one of our 60 millimeter screws here, a 40 millimeter spacer, another one of our nine millimeter aluminum spacers. And notice here on the end plate, there is a mounting configuration for this NEMA 23 with threaded holes. So we've got one, two, three, and four. 
Alright, so we're going to start off with one of these holes first. I'm going to start with the left side. I'm going to go ahead and feed the screw through with our aluminum spacer on the other side, as well as our 9mm spacer attached. We're going to go ahead and thread that through with our ball driver. Alright, we're going to leave that kind of loose, just so we can fit the other screws and aluminum spacers in place. So we can go ahead and grab another 60mm screw, 40mm aluminum spacer, and a 9mm aluminum spacer. Alright, keep it a little bit loose, and we're going to do the same thing for the bottom two here. Alright, now that you have those fastened in place, we're going to go ahead and tighten them down. So now it's solid, super rigid, don't have to worry about that motor moving anywhere. So we're going to go ahead and grab one of our flexible couplings, and notice the size difference on the ends of the flexible coupling. Remember, a quarter inch bore is what's going to go around the NEMA 23 shaft. So we're going to go ahead and slide that in place, making sure that the flat end of the motor is visible to be attached to our set screws on our flexible coupling. So I'm going to go ahead and face that to the proper side, grab one of our ball drivers here, and we're going to adjust that down onto the shaft. All right. Readjust uh, your flexible coupling to the other side, and we're going to adjust that down as well. So now this motor is set on the left side of our machine. We're going to go ahead and do the same thing for the right side. All right, let's get started. All right, now that we have our motor assembled onto our right side, we're going to adjust our motor shaft to the upright flat head. Take our flexible coupling. Like I said, make sure that the quarter inch is going to be on the motor shaft and make sure that we tighten the set screw down properly. All right, beautiful. This is really coming together. We got our motors attached. The machine base is partially assembled, so we're going to move on to the next step, guys. Alright, moving on to the next step here, we're going to be putting in our 1000mm lead screw into the right side of our Y-axis. For this process, we will need two of our 8mm lock collars, two of our 8mm shims, two of our flange bearings, and our ball driver set here. Of course, our 1000mm screw we're going to start off with. We're going to go ahead and feed this in through the opposite end of the machine going towards the motor. So if you need to adjust the placement of your machine, go ahead and begin to feed the screw through. On this side especially, we're going to start with our flange bearing first, our 8mm shim. And our 8mm lock collar. Now, as we feed the lead screw through, remember that we did not tighten our nut blocks down. So, we will do that after the lead screw is set to our flexible coupling on the opposite end of the machine. So, we're going to thread it through. Alright, so as you turn to the right, your lead screw should be threading through the block. Alright, now as I'm doing this, I'm going to slide my 8mm lock collar, flange bearing, and 8mm shim back towards this end plate. I want to keep those in place. And then on the opposite end, I'm going to stack the three pieces, 8mm lock collar, flange bearing, and 8mm shim on the opposite end of the lead screw. So starting with the lock collar, 
eight millimeter shim and our flanged bearing. All right, so we're gonna continue to thread this through. All right, so we've almost got it threaded through completely. Now we're getting to the end of the flexible coupling. We want to insert that into the flexible coupling and continue to thread through until you reach a stopping point where you will see your gantry system here moving. All right, so we're to the end of the line here. So you should see that your lead screw end is completely flush with the plate, which is due to our perfect design here. So we're gonna go ahead and put our flange bearing all the way in. You wanna make sure that this is tight with our lock collar, so push, put a little force on the end here, and we'll go ahead and grab our ball driver and begin to tighten this down onto the lead screw. Like so, make sure it's nice and tight. It's all the way flush against our end plate here. We're gonna go to the opposite end and do the same thing. We're going to adjust our flexible coupling here now. We want to tighten that against the lead screw. So we're going to start with our set screw here. Tighten that down. So now our lead screw is in place. And we are going to move on to the next step, guys. Alright, so moving on to the next step, we are going to be placing our 1,000mm lead screw in the opposite side of the machine on the Y-axis. So this will be the left side of the machine where our motor is mounted to our Y-axis plate here. So for this step, we are going to need two of our flange bearings, two of our 8mm lock collars, and two of our 8mm shims along with our 1,000mm lead screw and our ball driver set. So you go ahead and take our lead screw, similar to how we started last time. We're going to feed it through the opposite end of the motor. I'm going to adjust my machine in order to give me access. So we're going to take our flange bearing, place it on top of the lead screw here, feed it through, 8mm shim followed, and our 8mm lock collar. So I'm going to push that all the way to the back here as we feed the lead screw through our nut blocks. Now once again for these nut blocks, we left them loose so we could tighten them down after the lead screw is in place. So we will do that after the flexible coupling is also mounted to the lead screw. So let's go ahead and finish threading this through both nut blocks here. All right, so there's our lead screw. So we're gonna go ahead and add our additional parts. So the eight millimeter lock collar, our eight millimeter shim, our flanged bearing and then continue to feed it through all right so now that our lead screw is fed through we are going to be inserting it into our flexible coupling here so continue to thread it through until you feel a bit of resistance, which is a stopping point for this lead screw. All right, so now we're going to take our flange bearing, place it inside of the end plate here. Make sure you have some force on your eight millimeter lock collar here before you fasten it down. So that's tight, it's flush against the end plate. We're gonna do the same thing to the opposite end here. So now we're gonna move on to our flexible coupling here. Perfect. Okay, so now we're going to move on to our nut blocks here and make sure that they are tight. Now that the lead screw is fed through, we have perfect placement. We can tighten these nut blocks down. All right, perfect. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, guys, moving on to the next step here. We are going to be assembling our black angle corner connectors onto our base assembly. We are going to need two of our black angle corner connectors, two of our M5 T-nuts, two of our drop-in T-nuts, and four of our 8 millimeter screws. So to start off, we're going to take our M5 T-nuts on each side of the extrusion here. We're going to run it through the top portion of the slot, push that in place, if you need to make adjustments, we can use our ball driver in order to push that down further. Same thing on this opposite end here. Gonna go ahead and push that T-nut in through the top. So using our ball driver, I'm gonna push this T-nut in a little bit further. Do the same thing with the opposite end here. As you can see, 
There's the M5T nut. All right, so we're gonna take our black angle corner connector on one of our sides, kind of line it up, see where the placement for the drop-in uh, T-nut will be on this bottom lip here on the rail on our C-beam. We're gonna push that forward and align it with our other M5 T-nut and go ahead and push our black angle corner connector in place. Take our eight millimeter screw here. We're gonna start to thread that into our drop-in T-nut first. Go ahead and tighten that down. Another one of our uh, eight millimeter screws here. Go ahead and screw that into place. And we're gonna do the, the same on the opposite end here. All right, now that we have our second black corner connector in place, it looks nice, black on black, that's what I'm talking about. And this is our opposite end here. So we're gonna move on to the next step, guys, which is going to be doing the same process on the opposite end of our machine. All right, so on this step, guys, we are going to need two of our black angle corner connectors, four of our eight millimeter screws, two of our M5 T-nuts, and two of our drop-in T-nuts, our M5 ball driver here. So we're gonna do the same process that we did on the previous step. We're gonna take our M5 T-nuts here, run them through the top portion of the rail. All right, I'm gonna take my M5 ball driver and push them into place. I'm gonna take one of our drop-in T-nuts, put it on the bottom slot of our C-beam, line it up with your M5 T-nut, go ahead and put your black angle corner connector in place. And we're gonna go ahead and grab our eight millimeter screw, start with the drop-in T-nut on top, go ahead and fasten that into place. Another 8mm screw here, we'll attach to our M5 T-nut, tighten that into place. Very nice, we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side. All right, now that you have this mounted to our base assembly and our Y axis, as you can see, this is a sturdy foundation right here. Looks great. All right, guys, so we're going to go ahead and move on to the next step. Okay, guys, on this next step here, we are going to be building our foundation for our base assembly. We've got two of our 20 by 40 rails here at 915. We've got two of our 20 by 80 rails. They are at 960 millimeters in length. So we're also going to need M5 T nuts. We're going to need 18 for one side, also going to need 18 for the opposite side, as well as our M5 8mm screws. We're going to need 8 for one side, 8 for the opposite, and in the total we're going to have 4 of our double brackets. We're going to need our M5 ball driver, permanent marker, and our metric tape. Alright, so starting off with this process, we're going to grab our permanent marker here, and we're going to go ahead and mark our placement, which should be at 190, 190 millimeters. So as you can see here, I've made a slight mark already at 190. So we're gonna do the same thing. We wanna just make a small speck on the actual V-slot. We don't wanna cover it completely with a line. It just doesn't look as good if you were to cover it completely. So one, one mark should be sufficient and on the back end as well, we are gonna do the same thing. So we're gonna measure from the back of the 20 by 80 V-slot, 190 into the V-slot and same on this end for both of our pieces here. So now from here, we are going to take one of our double L brackets and we are going to mount our 20 by 40 to our 20 by 80 V slot. So we're going to take the double L bracket here, we're going to line the corner up with our permanent mark here, and we're also going to slide our 20 by 40 V slot over slightly so our double L bracket is within the track of the 20 by 80. Also, with these L brackets, the spacing is different, larger spacing on the bottom portion as well as shorter spacing here on the top portion. So the top portion that's closer to the edge here is the one that we're gonna be mounting to our 20 by 40 V slot. And then the bottom portion we will mount to our 20 by 80. Let's go ahead and line that up. Now we're gonna take two of our M5 T-nuts, place them within the track here. Take our M5 ball driver and we can go ahead and adjust those to the placement we need. We're also gonna do the same thing for the 20 by 40 V slot here. I'm gonna slide our T nuts into the side. All right, now we're gonna take our double L bracket here. 
see how that position looks. Our T-nuts are lined up. So before we do this, our 20 by 40 rail is evenly spaced on both sides of the 20 by 80. Basically you want to center for consideration of an L bracket. So here on the bottom portion, if you can just get a simple measurement, which is approximately 17 millimeters, that's all you need in order to have placement for your double L bracket. So this looks good. It's been positioned. So now we're going to take two of our 8mm screws here and start this assembly. Alright, now that's one side. We're going to go ahead and flip this over and do the second side on the back end of the 20 by 80. As you can see here, my spacing is equal for my bracket as well. So double check that and bring a bracket in. Looks great. So once again, we're gonna do four T-nuts in total, two on the 20 by 40 and two on the 20 by 80. All right, once again, you wanna take that measurement, 190. We're gonna keep it consistent. And as you can see, I've got mine pre-marked here. Go ahead and position your M5 T-nuts with your M5 ball driver. All right, we're going to grab our double L bracket. The spacing that's closest to the edge here is going to mount to our 20 by 40. The outer spacing is going to mount to our 20 by 80. All right, now that we have our double L brackets in place, we are going to add the finishing touches to this piece. Our T-nuts need to be placed for the mounting of these bottom spoiler pieces to our base frame. So we're gonna go ahead and position our T-nuts. We need four in place here on the top portion of the V-slot, our 20 by 80. All right, in addition to that, we are also going to be adding a new configuration for our, our spoiler board. So we're gonna add two T-nuts on the side rail here of the 20 by 80, and uh, in additional steps, we will show you the process of mounting that spoiler board. It's definitely pretty awesome. We, uh, we came up with this new design. It's sturdy, it's aesthetically pleasing. It's gonna be from underneath the actual machine. So the mounting process is simple, and like I said, super sturdy. So we're excited to show you guys this new configuration. Alright, so we're just going to slide those T-nuts in here on the side. We're going to leave them for now and uh, add the additional parts once we get to that step. So the other uh, T-nuts that we're going to add to this piece are going to be on the opposite side of the V-slot. Alright, so four more in this track here. Let's go ahead and put this piece to the side here, and we're gonna go ahead and work on our second piece. Once again, our measurements were made. You can see here I've got my marks. So if you haven't done that, go ahead and uh, make sure that you mark this off at 190 millimeters. In addition to that, we wanna make sure that our spacing is appropriate for our double brackets. Double check that, looks great. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and mount this on the opposite side. Remember that spacing should be as accordingly. We're gonna do the shorter spacing closer to the edge here on our 20 by 40 rail. The outer spacing will be added to our 20 by 80 rail. I can't stress that enough. All right, so we're gonna grab two of our T-nuts here and start assembling this. All right, now that we have these double brackets mounted to our uh, frame here, so our 20 by 80 to the 20 by 40, we're gonna add our additional T-nuts, four on the end of the 20 by 80. And we're gonna flip that around and do the same thing on the opposite end here. All right, and then we have our additional two M5 T-nuts that we are gonna run across this section of the rail here, down on the bottom, and this will be for the mounting of our spoiler board. So insert your T-nuts here. 
All right, we're just gonna leave them in the track for now and we'll get to that portion on our following steps. These are going to be our support beams here, two of them, one on each side of the machine and then we'll also have one 20 by 80 that's floating in between. So as you can see here, our machine's pretty much assembled. We're just putting on the finishing touches, man. This thing is awesome. All right, so let's move on to the next step, guys. Okay, guys, on this step here, we are going to need six of our double L brackets. We're gonna need 12 of our M5 T-nuts, 12 of our eight millimeter screws, our M5 ball driver, Sharpie, and our metric tape. Now we're gonna start our process here by sliding in our T-nuts on the bottom rail of the 20 by 40 rail. And we're going to take a measurement here on each side at 290. 19 millimeters and this is for the mounting process of our spoiler board. So let's go ahead and get our tape. All right, bring that out to 219 millimeters here. As you can see I've already got it marked off here with my permanent marker. So we're going to go ahead and mark that. Bring it around to the other side. Also need another 219 as you can see that is marked off. All right, and for our center point we're gonna split the difference between the brackets which that measurement should come up to about 20 millimeters. All right, so to start this off, let's go ahead and feed our M5 T-nuts into the bottom slot of the 20 by 40 rail. Alright, now that you have all your M5 T-nuts in place, we're going to go ahead and use our ball driver here and slide them down further. We're going to take one of our double brackets and notice the spacing difference. The holes that are closest to the edge of the bracket here, we are going to be mounting to our 20 by 40 rail. All right, so the bracket should be at an upward position like so. This accounts for our mounting process of our beams that will be running in between the Y axis here. All right, so let's go ahead and grab an 8 millimeter screw and thread this into our M5 T nut. Alright, we're going to repeat this process for the next three holes. Our configuration is going to consist of two of our double L brackets uh, assembled together, create basically a quad bracket. Right, and we're going to take our double L bracket here and mount it next to our other bracket, create basically a quad bracket for a sturdy foundation, also a rigid design here, so there's nothing that's going to break this machine. Alright, so now that we have these brackets in place, we're going to go ahead and work on the other side. Same concept, we are going to measure first. Just to make sure that our point of reference is accurate. So we're going to go ahead and move our T-nuts into place. Alright, go ahead and grab one of your double L brackets here. And one of our M5 8mm screws. Alright, start that one off. And we're going to finish it up just like we did the others. All right, we got these in place as well. We're gonna go ahead and grab our measuring tape and find out the distance in between, which is approximately 400 millimeters here. All right, so we're gonna split the difference here. It's 200 millimeters, and we are going to mark this point of reference. All right, we're gonna move our T-nuts over. Let's go ahead and grab our double L bracket with one of our M5 eight millimeter screws. Go ahead and mount that into place. All right, we're going to follow that same process for the second bracket here. Now we have three of our quad bracket configurations in place here. We are going to do the same thing on the opposite side of the machine. So let's move on to the next step. All right guys, so moving on to our next step here. Once we have our brackets in place on both sides, we will then start our spoiler board configuration for the appropriated depth. Ours is the extended depth version for the thousand by thousand, which is super awesome. You can do some great design work on this machine. Super excited about the release. This is gonna be one awesome work bee. So we're gonna go ahead and get our 20 by 80 rail here. 
This is going to be floating in the middle. So as you can see here, I have our quad configuration with our double L brackets. This is the center. We've got our left and our right. So with the center piece, we're going to go ahead and insert four of our T-nuts. So we're going to need eight T-nuts in total, guys. Four for each side. We're going to insert them just like so. Go ahead and flip that 20 by 80 to the other side. All right, I'll repeat the process here. All right, now that our T-nuts are in place, we are going to flip the rail and place it on top of our middle brackets. All right, so now that the 20 by 80 rail is in place here, we can start with adding our additional uh, center pieces for our spoiler board. Let's go ahead and grab these guys here. So we're gonna go ahead and flip those. So after you have this piece in place, notice that the brackets are on the left side. So with our other piece, you want to make sure that the brackets are going to be on the right side. So they'll be facing our Y access plate here. Alright, so let's go ahead and grab it. And make sure that that bracket's on the right side. Perfect. Alright, let's go ahead and shift it over here to our brackets. Alright, perfect. So, you should see this design here, and this is our spoiler board configuration. It's starting to look really great, guys. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the next step. Alright, so on this next step, guys, we're going to need just four T-nuts, and we are going to slide them into our 20 by 80 two on each side of the track here, where my fingers are. So we're going to go ahead and lift this up. It's not mounted yet. All right, and we can just slide those down a little bit further. All right, and go ahead and rest your 20 by 80 onto the double brackets that we have down below. And let's move on to the next step, guys. Okay, so on this step, guys, we're gonna need 12 of our M5 eight millimeter screws, our M5 ball driver here, and we are going to be mounting our three pieces of V-slot here to our frame. So this will be for our spoiler board here. And the easiest way to access that is to use your table as a platform here and kind of let your machine hang off to the edge. That way we can access underneath. All right, so to start off, we're gonna start with this piece of V-slot here. I'm gonna go underneath and begin to mount the eight millimeter screws inside. I'm just gonna grab a couple. Make sure that your T-nuts are aligned. I'm gonna go ahead and move them with my driver to get one in place. Make sure that it's flush against the 20 by 80 V-slot. We're gonna go ahead and fasten that into place. Okay, so a little tip here, guys. Our M5 8mm screws, you want to leave loose. That way, if need be to align the rest of the T-nuts, you can still shift this 20 by 80 back and forth. So this definitely convenience the builder. All right, so we're going to finish up by tightening these 8mm screws down, and we're going to continue the same process along the rest of these. So it'll be uh, 12 total, and then we're going to work on the back side of the machine as well. So let's go ahead and finish this up, guys. Okay guys, so make sure that the V-slot is flush against the 20 by 40 rail, like this one here for example. This will not work with the opposite side of the machine, so we gotta make sure that we bring this in to a flush point. Alright guys, so on this step, we're gonna need 12 of our 8 millimeter screws with our M5 ball driver. And we're gonna start here on our, our middle piece of V-slot, and we're going to assemble that first, and then we're later on going to prop a piece underneath to lift this whole system to give us easier access to the other two pieces. All right, so let's get started, guys. Okay, guys, a little pro tip. Using this router spindle mount, we're actually able to prop it underneath the center beam, and this makes it a whole lot easier to access these points here. So we're gonna go ahead and finish tightening these beams down, and we will have our spoiler board ready. All right, so let's just go ahead and tighten these down. All right, so let's move on to the last one here. So if you find that one of your T-nuts has slipped past your double L bracket or even your 20 by 40 here, you can actually use a magnetized screwdriver and I use that to manipulate the T-nut back and forth. It works really great. All 
All right, that looks great. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next step. All right guys, so we're gonna go ahead and remove our router spindle mount. That way it doesn't get damaged and we will save this for a later step. We'll be mounting this to the Z-axis. Okay guys, so now that we're resting on the base, we actually have uh, freed up both of our accesses to where we can move them to the front of the machine here, this whole gantry system. So in order to uh, make sure that everything is square on this machine, we need to go ahead and adjust these flexible couplings on both sides to the front of the machine, like so. It takes a little while to get to the end of the machine here, but once we get there, we will see if our machine is aligned properly. All right, and that is the end of the line for the gantry system. As you can see here, everything is flush against the 20 by 40 rail, so our machine is aligned. Okay, now that we have our gantry assembly moved all the way forward, this gives us proper room to uh, mount our L brackets for our spoiler board assembly. Okay guys, on this step, we are going to be setting up our single L brackets for our mounting configuration for our spoiler board. We're going to need here is eight single L brackets we're also going to need eight of our M5 eight millimeter screws and eight of our drop-in T-nuts along with our M5 ball driver here. So let's go ahead and grab one of our L brackets here. Now the spacing is the same. You're going to have one hole closer to the edge here. That's the hole that we're going to use to mount to our 20 by 40 rail. So this placement will look like so. Now before we do any type of mounting, I'm going to show you a little pro tip here. The eight millimeter screw can go ahead and be assembled with our drop-in T-nut to make for an easy mount mounting process. So we're going to do four on the back of our machine and four on the front of our machine. So here on the back of the machine, we're going to place an L bracket in the middle of each spot. And then we're going to mirror that onto the front of our machine as well. So we're going to go ahead and assemble these single L brackets like so. Now with the drop in T nut, you want to make sure that the grooved ends are facing you. So as you're assembling the single L bracket, these should be facing the L bracket. And the purpose of that is these grooves will lock into the track. So it will insert and spin and those grooves grip onto the V-slot. Alright, so let's go ahead and assemble these. All right, now that we have our L brackets assembled here, I'm gonna go ahead and grab one here and grab your M5 ball driver. Go ahead and insert it into the screw and you can manipulate the way that the drop-in T-nut moves. So we want it horizontal. We're gonna slide it into the track like so. Go ahead and center it. You can do measurements or you can simply eyeball it here like we're doing. Either way, this is gonna be a sturdy mount for our spoiler board. We're gonna have a total of eight L brackets just on our front and back side and then we're gonna have an additional eight in the middle of our design all right and that's solid if you get a little tilt on your bracket here just go ahead and adjust it with your m5 ball driver you just stick it in between here and pry it all right and that's one we're gonna go ahead and do the other three for this side and then the additional four for our front end of the machine All right, so we have all of our brackets assembled here on the back side of the machine. They're solid, sturdy. Now we're gonna move on to the front side of the machine and assemble it the same way. All right, so now that the machine has been turned 180 degrees, we're gonna go ahead and finish up the front end of the machine with our L brackets here. All right, now that we have all eight of the single L brackets in place for our spoiler board mounting configuration, we are going to continue on towards the middle here. As you can see, we have our T-nuts already in place from our previous steps. So we're gonna go ahead and do some measurements and mount those single L brackets on the following step. It's good job, guys. This machine is looking excellent. Okay, guys, for this step, we are going to need eight of our single L brackets, eight 
of our eight millimeter screws, uh, tape measure, and our M5 ball driver. Now in this step, we are going to be finishing up our spoiler board assembly. So on the previous step, I did show you a sneak preview of what we're going to be doing here. We're going to be measuring a foot out of the 20 by 80 and mounting our L bracket in two places alongside the 20 by 80 rail on the right side of the machine, as well as in four places in the center and two places on the left side of the machine. So let's go ahead and grab our measuring tape here and measure out. All right. So if you want to go ahead and mark that point of reference, I'm going to slide this T-nut over to one foot. And that is perfect. It's in place. So we're going to go ahead and take one of our L brackets. Once again, the spacing that's closest to the corner of the L bracket will be mounted to our 20 by 80 V slot and the larger spacing will mount to our spoiler board. Let's go ahead and feed the eight millimeter screw through. All right, make sure to tighten it down. All right, and that looks great. So now we're going to do the next three on this side. Align these at one foot, of course. So now that you have all of your corner brackets assembled here, we are going to move on to the opposite side. So we're going to go ahead and spin this machine so we can access the other sides easily. Okay, so now that we have the machine turned, we are going to measure out one foot for each of these T-nuts. Let's go ahead and grab our measuring tape here. Measure out to one foot and adjust the T-nut accordingly. Grab one of our L brackets. Once again, make sure that this closer spacing to the corner here is mounted to our 20 by 80 V slot. We're gonna finish this up on the additional three. All right, so now we are finished with our spoiler board assembly. Each bracket is in place. So from here, we will begin the process of mounting our spoiler board onto our work bee. This machine's looking fantastic, guys. And we will move on to the next step, guys. Okay, guys, so on this step, we are going to be mounting our spoiler board. So underneath, we have our L brackets positioned. So on this step, we're gonna need our power drill set at a lower setting, and we're gonna need 16 of our self-tapping screws. And let's go ahead and get started, guys. Okay guys, so as you can see here, we have one of our L brackets in place. I fed my self-tapping screw into our drill here, and I'm going to hold the board down while I start to drill this in. So let's continue on the other L brackets and mount our spoiler board. Okay guys, on this next step, we are going to be putting on our finishing touches to our work bee. We have our end caps, which will go on each end of our 20 by 40 rail frame. So in this step, we are going to need four of our end caps and eight of our self-tapping screws. Of course, our power drill. So on this step, we're just going to go ahead and grab two of our self-tapping screws, one to start off and one of our end caps. I'm going to place it into our end cap like so. All right, and once you uh, shift the end cap over towards the 20 by 40 rail here on the end, we're going to slowly start to drill this screw in. Make sure that you have a hold of your machine and go ahead and start it up. If you have any issues with the screw going into the 20 by 40 rail, just back it out, push it back in, and repeat that process until you get a good thread hold inside of the 20 by 40 rail. So we're going to go ahead and do our second screw on the bottom of the end cap. Make sure you got a firm hold on the machine. And that is our end cap on one of the ends. So we're going to go ahead and do the other three the same exact way. All right, so moving on to our next step here. And this is actually our final step. We are going to be mounting our router spindle mount to our Z axis. And in this step, we're going to need four of our black angle corner connectors. We're going to need eight of our eight millimeter screws and four of our drop in T nuts. Of course, our uh, router spindle mount. Which if you haven't assembled, go ahead and assemble. And our M5 ball driver. All right, so starting off. Off, we're going to grab one of our black angle corner connectors here, one of our 8mm screws, and a drop in T-nut. We're going to go ahead and thread this 
drop in T-nut to our screw. Makes it a little bit easier for the mounting process. All right, so we got a couple threads on there. All right, so we're gonna come on over to our Z-axis here. And I'm gonna align our black angle corner connector to our end mount. So make sure that when you thread your drop in T-nut here, you align the bottom lip of your black angle corner connector to your end plate and go ahead and fasten that down. Now you can always adjust these later on. It's a simple process, depending on what router you're using. All right, so I've got that one in place. Gonna go ahead and grab another of our black angle corner connectors, one of our eight millimeter screws, and drop in T-nut. Same process, I'm gonna go ahead and thread that in. Once you finish the mounting of the two black angle corner connectors on the bottom here, I'm gonna go ahead and grab our router spindle mount. Go ahead and tighten these bolts down, make sure that they're in place. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and take this with two of our eight millimeter screws. We are going to place it on top of our black angle corner connectors, and we're gonna thread it into these two holes here. So the holes that are farthest away from the center here are gonna be threaded in with these eight millimeter screws. So generally I'll move this C axis up as far as I can go. Give me a little room. All right, so that's all the way up. So once you have your eight millimeter screw in place, I go ahead and tighten that down. Now with limited space, we can use our M5 Allen key here using our shorter end, and this will allow you to get underneath the machine. All right, so once you get that first screw in place, it's pretty sturdy, so it'll be easier for your second screw to be threaded in. So we're gonna go ahead and thread in our second screw. Now we've got our bottom two black angle corner connectors in place. So we're gonna go ahead and work on our top two. Let's go ahead and grab a black angle corner connector, eight millimeter screw, and one of our drop in T-nuts. Once again, we're gonna go ahead and thread that in place. We're gonna mount this to align with our top outside holes here on the router spindle. Go ahead and fasten that down. I'm gonna repeat the process for our second one here. All right, now that we have our two black angle corner connectors on top of our router spindle here and mounted, we're gonna go ahead and thread in our eight millimeter screws to our router spindle. If you have any issues with alignment, as you can see here, my um, threaded hole is a little too far in. We're gonna go ahead and readjust our black angle corner connector. Go ahead and push that over and fasten it back down. Now our router spindle mount is in place. Go ahead and get a good shot of this machine. You guys just built a work bee. Good job.